What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training. And today we're going to be breaking down how to throw a better deep ball for quarterbacks. Okay, so we're going to be talking about three specific tips on how you guys can throw a better deep ball off of like a drop back where you're hitching up into the throw, how you guys can throw better deep on the run, and then how you guys can sit there in the pocket going through progressions and then maybe hit this ball downfield maybe a little bit later in your read progression on a deeper throw. Okay, so I hope this video helps you guys out, helps you guys out throwing mechanics wise, deep ball wise, and just makes you a better quarterback overall. But also, if you're a quarterback and you want to improve the mental side of your game, not necessarily just the physical side. It's also about the mental side. It's probably 80% mental of a position. Check out that very first link in the description where you can get access to 400 plus videos on how to read defenses. On our website, we have all these videos, probably 400, 450 videos broken down to specific categories like so. Cover two, cover three, cover four, et cetera, where we talk about how to read each coverage, what to look for in each defense, and how quarterbacks can go through their pre-snap read. This is our cover two playlist and all the different videos that we have. We probably have about 50 plus videos on just cover two alone. So I hope you guys can check that out if you want to get better football IQ, improve your reading defense's ability. Check out that very first link in that description below. Let's get started with this video. So we're looking at Aaron Rodgers right here throw off of this like kind of three hitch drop and you see he's able to drive this thing downfield, be very accurate on this throw and get a lot of arc on this throw, right? So what are some of the key things about throwing a deep balls? You've got to make sure that we, number one, have weight on my back leg when I go to throw because arm strength, throwing with power is all about weight transfer. We got to have the correct shoulder path and we got to have the correct release point. So those are the three things I want to highlight in this video. So, so many quarterbacks, when they get to the top of their drop, they do what Aaron Rodgers does, right? They have a lot of weight on their front leg, but you see how Rodgers, when he gets to this drop, he's got most of his weight. He's got probably about 80% of his weight on this back leg, but his back leg, or his front leg, excuse me, but his back leg isn't super far wide. It's not like his back leg is way out here to where he'll never be able to get weight on it because you see when he hitches up, it's a shift of the weight. It's like he goes from 80 on the front leg, 20 on the back leg, and then he switches the weight and he gets 80 on the back leg, 20 on the front leg now. Now, the reason why we got to be able to do that is because like I said, power is all about weight transfer. How much weight can you transfer from that front, from that back leg to that front leg? That's the number one goal because that's ultimately what will get your hips to rotate through. And you see how when Rodgers goes to throw that back leg is underneath his frame. So many quarterbacks struggle with this. When they hit the top of this drop, they'll reset to hitch, but they never get their weight to this back leg. They'll reset to hitch, but their weight stays distributed on the front leg. And the problem with that is, is that when you go to throw, you have no weight to transfer from the back leg. So you have to make sure, fellas, anytime that we take a hitch up on a deep ball, we tri we shift that weight back. And you see how Rodgers, it's not necessarily just he's got his back leg with a little bit of knee bend. His whole entire like pad level is back, right? He's leaning into this back leg. His back leg is absorbing the weight because when we go to throw, if I can get this shift of weight to the front leg, when I shift that weight and I get 80% to the front leg and now I'm like 90, 10, 10 being on the back leg, that's what allows your hips to rotate through. I want all of you to stand up if you, if you can, maybe pause the video, whatever it is, but stand up and have weight on your back leg and try to rotate your hips. Your front hip locks out. Now try to get a bunch of weight on your front leg and rotate your hips. And you see how your front hip can op open up just a little bit more. That's the thing. That's pretty much the entire concept. That weight transfer is what gets your hips to roll through. And that's what will help you put more distance on the ball if we have the correct shoulders and arm path. And that's what we're going to be getting into now. So make sure quarterbacks, anytime I go to throw a deep ball, if I'm throwing it off of a hitch, I reassess, I get my weight to this back leg so I could transfer it through to the front leg. And that's what will make my hips rotate through. And when you could get your hips to rotate through and you get to this spot right here where your back leg is coming through before the football, that's an opportunity for you to generate torque and be able to generate power. Again, like I said, a lot of quarterbacks, what they'll do is this back leg will either be too wide, all their weight will be on their front foot. And then when they go to throw, their back leg does the opposite. Their back leg goes behind them and then their shoulders come through before the hips and they lose all kinds of power on that thing. And that's why the nose of the football won't turn over because you don't have a clean pathway with your hips. So make sure that we have weight on that back leg and I'm concerned with transferring it through to get my hips to roll into this thing. Now, to be able to get that nice arc on the throw, right? Everybody loves to talk about, oh, I want to be able to drop it in. You got two ball, three ball. You got a one ball, which is on a line. A two ball is like a touch corner. And then a three ball is like what we're throwing right now, which is a deep ball. So how are you able to do that? When you do that, you got to make sure that you have some kind of an arc with your front shoulder. If you could get your shoulders at like a 45 degree angle, that's probably a good, and it doesn't have to be a perfect 45. Not everything's perfect. Every quarterback's different, but just some kind of arc because when you transfer your weight, your hips are going to roll through. And if your shoulders are arced, your hips are going to rotate up and over 
And when your hips go up and over, that allows you to kind of have this path of the ball shooting up, right? So you see how Rodgers, his hips are rotating through because his shoulders is up, shoulders are up. That arm pathway is like this. The arm pathway is on like a 45 degree angle. Now for icing on the cake to get that thing to really take off and really get some air on me, I got to flick that wrist at the top of the release point like I'm shooting a free throw, like I'm trying to grab something off the top shelf, et cetera. So those are the three main keys to throw that better deep ball. You got to make sure that you're able to transfer that weight, get that weight to the back leg because that weight transfer will get the hips to roll through, which will help you get more power. And then if you could combine that with an arced front shoulder and the weight transfer, that gets your arm on a clean path on like that 45 degree angle. And then when you snap that wrist at the top, that's what gives that ball plenty of air. And you see how much air Rodgers is able to get, how he's able to drop this thing down. And you see the nose of the football is coming down. That's a great throw. That's a great example of what you guys need to do on a deep ball to be more consistent and to just throw a better overall deep ball. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job shifting the weight back, driving this thing, and being able to snap that wrist at the top. All right, so now second clip we're going to be looking at here is from Zach Wilson. So Zach Wilson does a great job of um, on the run when you guys are throwing, when you have to put a little bit more juice on this thing and you have to throw it downfield. The main important thing is all about sequence, right? So let's see what Zach Wilson does here. So the sequence on the run you guys all know this. When we're throwing from the pocket, right, if you're a right-handed quarterback, obviously you're stepping with your left foot, right? And then you're transferring your weight with your back foot, and that's what gets your hips to rotate through. The hips are the most important thing when you're trying to throw a deep ball and you're trying to get more distance on it. So on the run, it's kind of the opposite. You want to step with your throwing side foot, and that's when you go back with your shoulders, right? So you see when Wilson goes to throw, his throwing side foot steps in the direction of the target as his shoulders are going back. That's the sequence that we're trying to get to because that's how you're going to be able to generate torque. They call it hip and shoulder dissociation, right? So what does that exactly mean? The, the simple way of saying that, I don't like using all those complicated words because I feel like it just confuses quarterbacks, but the simple way of saying it is you're getting your hips to the target and your shoulders are going back. So your shoulders and hips are doing the opposite thing. Your hips are going forward. Your shoulders are going back to create like a coil, right? Like So just a coil of energy when the ball comes through. And that's how we generate torque. And that has a lot to do with that left leg kicking through, but we'll get to that. But when you guys can step with your throwing side foot, point the toe at the target, that loads your hips. And then when you're able to rotate those shoulders back, that's going to give you so much torque, so much power if you kick this left leg through. And if you remain square at the release point, and what I mean by that is your hips and your shoulders should be facing the target. That's going to give you so much snap to the ball and so much pop to the ball. So when you guys are on the run, so many quarterbacks will make this mistake. They'll start to rotate on this foot. They'll step with that foot, then they start to rotate right? You see how Wilson, he's got about two, he's still got two hands on the ball and the left foot goes. But the problem with this is when quarterbacks go back on the left foot, they'll hit their right foot right here and they'll already be spread eagle at 90 and then their shoulders beat their hips and they push the ball and they lose power. So make sure you are stepping with your, your throwing side foot throwing side foot. So if you're a right hander, it's your right foot. If you're a left hander, it's your left foot. In the direction of a throw, point those toes at the throw to load those hips there. And when you rotate those shoulders, that creates that coil. That's what allows you to kick the left leg through and give you more of a snap to the throw. And then it's all about just where you're flicking that wrist. Same principles apply on the run. You could have a little bit of an arch shoulder. You could release that ball a little bit higher like you're seeing Wilson do. And that's how you guys can be more consistent. So make sure, fellas, that we are doing those key principles when we have to put a little bit more juice on the ball on the run and throw it a little bit further on the run. Let's watch thing again full speed one more time then we'll get to this throw here from josh allen great job with the sequence on the run here by wilson and being able to deliver a strike downfield that's a great ball now the story from josh allen this is a unique throw because again like not a whole lot of like Youth quarterbacks you see making these types of throws where they're sitting in the pocket and they're getting to a late read that's deep, that's far downfield, I guess you could say. Like maybe he's going from like, again, I don't know the read progression, but maybe we're going from like one and then like maybe we got another route that's two and then we're hitting this post on three or whatever it is. Or maybe we just got to sit back there and let this route develop because he's running a corner post and we have to give him a little bit of time, right? So when you're sitting in the pocket, the key to being able to throw a consistent deep ball is what do you think? It's weight transfer, right? Weight transfer and hip drive are the, is the thing that's going to relate to every single throw that you have as a quarterback for the remainder of your career, right? So when Josh Allen is back here in the pocket, you don't see him so many quarterbacks do this wrong, especially at the high school level, is they'll be sitting there with like 80% of their weight on the front foot. They'll be sitting there and they'll have so much weight on their front foot because they're anxious to get it out. And then when they go to throw, their back leg's not involved. They have no weight transfer. They have no hip drive. And they end up throwing it all arm. The goal to be able to get more power, to throw a better deep ball, to throw more velocity is to engage 
engage your legs and to engage your hips and to engage your core in the throw. And obviously, you got to have clean mechanics. And we have plenty of videos on that on our quarterback playlist about the specific mechanics of the throw. But you've got to make sure that you have weight on your back leg and that it's underneath your frame. So you see how when Allen goes through the pocket here, that back leg is under his frame. And what do I mean by that? His back foot isn't outside of his shoulders. When your back foot's outside of your shoulders, you are capped out on the amount of weight that you can put back there, right? A good example is like you look at Trevor Lawrence right now playing for the Jaguars. His back leg is starting to get more underneath his frame and he doesn't have as much of a lean. But when you look at Clemson film, his base is super wide. He doesn't have a ton of weight on the back leg and he has a lean out of there with his upper half, right? Like he dips his shoulders and his head out of there. And the problem with that is because his back leg's too wide, he doesn't get enough hip rotation. And again, obviously Trevor Lawrence is extremely talented, but that can lead to some inconsistencies, right? But you see him now in Jacksonville, that back leg, is a little bit lower and he has less of a lean with his upper half. But because Allen is able to sit back here with that back leg under his frame, he can transfer his weight no matter where he's at, right? He doesn't have to get set. He doesn't have to load back up. So when he's going through reads in the pocket, he could just plant that back foot. He's already got weight on the back leg. He's already got weight, like kind of absorbing the weight when having that knee almost be like over his toe. So no matter where he's at, whether he's got to throw it deep, whether he's got to throw it short, he could transfer the weight. So when we're trying to throw that deep ball and I'm trying to change up that level on the throw by releasing it a little bit higher. I just got to make sure that my weight's constantly on that back leg, back legs under your frame. So it's like, okay, he's open. That's my progression. I could just transfer and go. I'm preloaded in the pocket. So to throw a better deep ball off of that read, off of a progression and trying to sit back there in a clean pocket, make sure that you have weight on the back leg and you are prepared to throw this thing no matter what platform you're on, no matter where your feet are set and no matter where you are in the timing of the read. Let's watch this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Allen keeping weight on the back leg, keeping it under his frame. And then obviously, Obviously, transferring this thing through, changing up levels with that follow through and that shoulder arc. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I always appreciate the feedback. Always great hearing from you guys. And again, fellas, if you're a quarterback and you want to improve your reading defense's ability, you want to improve your football IQ, check out that very first link in the description. You could get access to over 400 videos on how to read each specific defensive coverage broken down into categories and what you guys should be looking for. Hope you guys could check that out. Very first link below. I'll see you guys next time.